I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this game between Leela and Stockfish in the T6 Super Final, uh, T6 17. Uh, this game is a Mar del Plata Kings Indian. And Leela's playing white, Stockfish is playing black. And it's fascinating to see it because engines don't often choose to go into the Kings Indian by choice. Um, and this opening was specified by TSEC. It goes into the age-old struggle of uh, white pushing pawns on the queen side and black going for king side counterplay. And Leela follows mainline theory for really a long time. Um, of course, Leela doesn't know the mainline theory. Leela's making it up uh, for itself. Um, and actually, an exponent of uh, these type of King's Indian positions was Korchnoi. And Leela separately comes up with many similar ideas to ones that Korchnoi played. Uh, one example is Leela putting its bishop on a5 to generate some queenside pressure on the c7 pawn. Um, and, then, and then Stockfish times very well its counterplay uh, and opens up the centre and gets lots of uh, tactical play against the king side. And uh, very entertainingly, the game turns into a struggle of white trying to get its knight back from b5 to a more centralised e4 attacking outpost, and black coming up with move after move to, to stop it being able to do so. Um, in the end, it turns into a fascinating draw where uh, black has two pieces against white's rook. Yeah, it's a really great game. Let's have a look at it. Okay, let's have a look at this game. So it started off d4, knight f6, c4, g6, and knight c3. And this uh, could go into the King's Indian with black playing d6 here. Uh, we gave some practice games when we were writing Game Changer uh, to uh, Alpha Zero. And what we said was in this position, uh, let Alpha Zero have free choice in what to play. Um, we also had it the other way around, so Alpha Zero playing white and Stockfish is black. And both engines would not choose d6 at all in this position, and they would both prefer to play d5, turning it into a Grunfeld. Yeah, that's right. It's um, I think it's uh, I don't know of any engine that plays um, uh, Bishop g7 in this position, going for uh, for a King's Indian. It's uh, they all want to play back into a Grunfeld, but once you make them play the King's Indian, then uh, they're doing nowadays they're doing a pretty good job of it. I have to say. So this is the uh, the classical variation. Um, black plays e5, so after some delay, black is occupying uh, the centre, gaining some central space. And after castles, uh, the Mar del Plata variation uh, starts when black plays knight c6, and after d5, then knight e7. So straight away, the, the battle lines are, are drawn, really. Uh, you see that white's got a, a central space advantage and, uh, and also a queenside space advantage with this uh, pawn on c4. Um, Black's uh, really got a, a nice opportunity to move the knight away from f6 and play f5 and start um, uh, throwing forward its kingside pawns. So one of the um, um, one of the main ways in which White uh, plays in this position is the move uh, knight e1, um, and this is uh, um, two points. First of all, that knight is coming round to d3 to support uh, the break c4 to c5. Um, and also, White's getting some opportunity to play f3 um, and uh, solidify its pawn chain in advance of a, of a black pawn storm. So it's both uh, defending and attacking. So Black plays... And this is still, I, I guess, part of the t set book that the engines have to play. Exactly. All still for, for a few moves yet, actually. So um, knight d7. Um, and in this game, we're going to have a look at the line where uh, knight d3 was specified. We've got another fantastic game where um, uh, the other main line, um, f3, was specified. But in this game, we're having a look at knight d3, f5, bishop d2, knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4, f3, and now f4. 
and uh, this was the last move specified by the uh, by the TSEC book. And uh, well, it set it up very nicely, really. F4 closes uh, uh, the center um, and prepares to uh, to advance on the wing with G5 to G4. And so White, leader in this case, has got to uh, to try and find out how to create queenside counterplay. Yeah, so the battle lines are already drawn. Exactly. Uh, Stockfish will have to play on the king's side and, and Leela on the queen's side. So um, Leela really very impressively um, follows uh, one of the most uh, uh, popular lines. Uh, it plays uh, the move c5, first of all, g5, and then rook c1. <clears throat> Knight g6, black moving its pieces towards the king's side. And now knight b5. Um, this is actually a quite a, um, um, a crucial little moment here. White's got all sorts of possibilities. Um, one of the ways that White can proceed is also White can also just take on d6. But not taking on d6 gives White uh, an extra possibility for, uh, for play on the queen side, uh, which we'll see because Black played rook f7, um, a very typical King's Indian move, defending c7, and the bishop can also drop back to f8 to defend the d6 pawn. And when the bishop drops back to f8, that rook can move over to g7 and support g5 to g4. It's a very typical King's Indian maneuver, very elegant. So um, bishop a5 from Leela, and this was the point of not taking on d6 so early. Um, if you'd uh, taken on d6, I'll just show you that, then obviously bishop a5 would be impossible because the bishop would be hanging. Um, not releasing the tension gives you this extra possibility. And now there's huge pressure on, um, on c7. c takes d6 is the, uh, is the threat. So black plays b6 just to, uh, to cover that. And, uh, well, here white's got a nice little subtlety, can take on d6. Um, if b takes a5, d takes c7, this is extremely dangerous for, um, uh, for black. Um, White's going to uh, to pick up the pawn on a5, and then those uh, central pawns, uh, queenside pawns, are going to be very, very dangerous. Look at those c and d pawns so early in the game. Uh, exactly. I mean, yes. yeah, it's a very typical um, idea just to uh, to sacrifice the uh, the uh, a piece for for pawns in this line. So um, after c takes d6, c takes d6 is uh, is normal theory, and here Leela plays bishop e1. Now, I might have been tempted to go bishop b4 in this position, attacking the d6 pawn. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, uh, this has been played as well. The only problem is that, um, well, black can, can cover the um, uh, the d6 square all right with um, with uh, bishop f8 and knight e8. And then it's going to start chasing away your pieces with, uh, with a6, a5, bishop uh, d7, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a, a dangerous in the short term and not a bad option at all. But, um, but maybe in the long term, you're going to get stuck. So what, um, what Leela plays, Leela plays uh, bishop e1. And, um, well, actually, it's just uh, not, not silly to reflect. You know, what, what has white actually gained with this uh, whole manoeuvre? Well, white's gained this, um, this weakening uh, b7 to b6, which gives it entry squares on c6 for its pieces. Now, the rook, as we saw in the previous line, but also the knight, so knight b4 to c6 is possible. And um, um, I mean, what, what you realize is, you know, in this type of position that um, it's not like you can just break through, you know, just without any effort on the on the queen side. It's a it's a constant process of first, um, you'd say, eroding the, um, uh, the, the black structure on the queen side, making it weaker and weaker, and then that gets you entry points. And that's going to be the same thing for a stockfish on the king side. So um, black now played um, a6. So that's that's um, you know one of those swings and roundabouts. It weakens the queen side a little bit, but it does chase a white piece back. Um, and then black plays a second move. I think this is Rajabov's move, um, a6 to a5. And the point of that move is to stop um, this knight coming into b4 and then c6. Um, so there we are. Um, there's been this initial flurry of activity. And um, uh, White's got some entry points on the queen side, but obviously he's lost a bit of time with his pieces. And um, well, Blacks can start thinking now about playing g5 to g4. Now, the obvious way for White to uh, uh, to play is to put a knight onto b5. Uh, the one thing then that uh, White's got to be careful about is this move g4 uh, without any preparation whatsoever, because 
f takes g4 can be met by knight takes e4. You know, the knight on c3 is no longer defending e4. So um, knight b5 is possible. Um, other white players have played knight f2, for example. That's um consolidating move, stopping g5 and to g4, e4. Yeah. and supporting e4 as well. That's right. Uh, but Leela prefers uh, a more, a slightly more aggressive plan with a little bit of preparation. It plays this move a4. Um, very unusual, although not yet a novelty. Um, so just um, really, I suppose, pinning down that pawn on b6 and making sure that when the knight comes to b5, it's protected. It's um, you know a good, solid positional move. Um, Stockfish plays uh, bishop f8, this typical King's Indian move, defending d6 and preparing rook g7, followed by g4. Uh, just in general, a general point, I suppose, is that... Um, um, I mean, you can play a move like h5 in this position, but um, uh, yeah, black players do. Tr if, they, if black players can get in g4 without playing h5, they'd much rather do it because it gives you um, uh, the possibility of playing the knight to h5 later, which is uh, often quite um, a, a dangerous little idea. So, bishop f8, Lila went knight b5, going for it. And Stockfish played g4 going for it, which uh, I think was a novelty, actually, although, you know, obviously very logical. So what does white do in these positions? I mean, white can leave that pawn. That is possible. But um, um, f takes g4 is, uh, well, to be honest, is something that I'd rather do. If you were just to play, um, you know, a quiet move like rook c4, for example, defending the pawn on e4 and threatening f takes g4, this sort of counterplay can get very dangerous from black. And um, and if white takes here, then, well, you'll notice the uh, the value of not having played h7 to h5 to get the knight to h5 like that. Um, those weakened dark squares, that always gives black um, quite a bit of counterplay. So white played f takes g4 here, um, knight e4. And then I suppose the key thing for white is to make sure that black doesn't move his knight away and get an e5 to e4, you know, which would be very dangerous. So Leela plays this move, rook c4, attacking the uh, the knight on e4. And here, quite an unusual moment, um, uh, because, uh, well, I ran quite a few uh, engine matches, as always, from this uh, position. And, uh, well, the one move that my engines really did not consider at all was the move that Stockfish played in this game. And in actual fact, that move seems to be, it's quite fraught, and it requires a lot of tactical precision, but it's possibly the best move in the position. Um, the move I look at is knight g5, I think. Yeah, I mean, knight g5 is uh, is an interesting one. It was my first thought as well, actually. Um, the knight, um, you know, just gets towards the king's side, threatens e5 to e4. But there's this unpleasant move, um, h4, when the knight's actually, uh, well, lost. It's uh, um, no longer any squares. And I mean, you can muddy the waters with uh, a move like e4. Um, but in my engine matches, this, pos this position after knight f2, knight takes c4, knight, knight h4, knight e4 rather, um, was turning out to be very nice for um, for white. Um, a lot of weak squares. I mean, this pawn on g4 is extremely annoying, stopping a bishop coming out to f5 or a knight coming to f5. And um, it just seems that black doesn't quite have enough activity. Um, the other move I looked at was um, knight c5, sorry, knight c5 which is very natural. Um, in this position, um, uh, Stockfish came up with an interesting plan here, just to, um, um, I was looking at playing b2 to b4, uh, which I thought was quite decent, but uh, Stockfish played bishop f2, and uh, takes takes and g3. This was in my games against, uh, I think it was Fat Fritz. Uh, um, and after knight g6, then knight f2, um, king h8, knight e4. And um, yeah, I mean, white's really beautifully solid. Um, attacking the pawn on d6, this pawn on g4 again is stopping bishop f5. It's very hard for black to do anything. Not so easy for the white. Knight is really nice though, isn't it, on e4? It's a great square. Yeah, it's a great square and uh, real King's Indian, anti-King's Indian knight, that one. You know, it's, uh, I mean, it's not that easy for white to make progress himself, but um, uh, certainly black's in for a long, a long defense there. You know, so uh, you'd definitely rather play this with white. So um, after rook c4, Stockfish played knight f6. Um, yeah, actually attacking the pawn on d5 there. That's one of the uh, of the ideas. And maybe thinking of playing e5 to e4 at some later stage. So white played bishop f3 um, just to protect the d5 pawn and cover uh, uh, e4. 
Um, and um, uh, here Black played a very precise tactical sequence. I mean, you, you start to wonder, um, in my um, engine matches, Fat Fritz against Stockfish, Fat Fritz liked Knight F2 very much, um, which might be quite sensible as well, um, in view of what uh, Stockfish plays, uh, which is this very precise tactical sequence. Stockfish plays E4, Bishop takes E4, Bishop G4. So, yeah, Black's lost a central pawn there, the E pawn, but at least has managed to get rid of that G4 pawn. So that frees up a little bit of kingside space. Bishop F3, and now Bishop takes F3, and Queen takes F3. And, um, well, looking at the game, I was quite surprised, really. I mean, because uh, just intuitively, I thought this position looks really good for, um, for, uh, uh, for, for white here. Um, Black's position looks very ragged. Uh, pawn on F4 is weak. Um, White's playing uh, knight d4 to e6, if you give him the chance. Um, that light squared bishop, which was Black's good bishop, has disappeared, you know. So um looks quite tricky, but there's some uh, some very specific tactical reasons why all this works. Starting with knight e5, forking uh, queen and rook, which forces knight takes e5, d takes e5. So Black's pawns are looking a bit better there. And um, actually, Black's threatening bishop c5 check as well, just uh, getting that bishop on f8 active. However, white's got this move, d6, cuts off the line of the bishop, and um, uh, the pawn can't be taken because the rook on a8 is hanging. So black played rook c8 here, um, and this is a very key moment, a very key tactical moment, actually, um, probably that Stockfish saw, you know, before it went in for all this, uh, because white, if white could play rook c7, then this would be um, very, very unpleasant for uh, for Black. I mean, you're going to follow up with Queen C6, Bishop H4. Um, Black just isn't getting free on the Queen side, um, and Rook C7, D takes C7 is um, is appalling as well. I mean, that's a huge pawn supported by the Knight on B5. However, Black has this this um, uh, tactical possibility, Bishop D6, and after Rook C8, Queen C8, Knight takes D6. Then black has queen. Oh, queen c5, picking up the knight. Exactly. And, uh, you know, getting rid of all the pressure there. So rook c7 is not actually possible. And this is uh, the first key point for keeping black afloat in this position. But if black didn't have it, then um, then it just would not work at all. So, um, yeah, I mean, very impressive uh, uh, from the engines there to, uh, to appreciate all this. White went rook c6, which is also quite dangerous. So rook c6, queen c6. Um, and now this very good defensive move, knight d7. So it covers the b6 square, um, which then frees the queen to come out to the king's side and start, um, you know, annoying white there. Um, and in actual fact, there's one strange thing in the position, and that's really that this white knight on b5 is now, um, it's doing a, a reasonable job, but it's a little bit offside, um, because after all, all the black pieces now are on the king's side, there's not much left on the queen's side. Um, and that knight doesn't really have any targets from b5. So the key thing that white wants to do is to play the knight round c3 to e4, because then that would be a very good position for white. You know, have just control over the position. Um, and you're going to see it's a very funny, very funny struggle, really, in the next uh, five to ten moves. Where white... I really like this phase of the game. It's, yeah, uh, how black does all these different mechanisms to stop the knight getting there. Yeah, and it's um, it's one of those things that um, you can easily just gloss over it and um, and not notice it. But when you do notice it, it's really, um, it's, it's great fun. Great. I, I really love these things. So, um, first of all, if white plays knight c3, then black plays knight c5. And uh, stopping uh, white from coming to e4, because this pawn on d6 is uh, is hanging. So white plays, logically, the move b4. Um, and after a takes b4, bishop b4, that pawn on d6 is, um, is, uh, is, uh, protected now. So, and also the c5 square is covered. So white is ready to play knight c3 to e4. So Stockfish comes up with queen g5. Um, which, not particularly obvious, why on earth can't you play knight c3? Well, there's a... If you do that, I've got f3. Exactly, which is not obvious at all. But if you play rook f3, I've got this venomous little counterattack, queen f2 check, king f2. And queen b2, picking up the bishop on b4. Exactly, exactly. So that one isn't possible. So white plays king h1. 
getting out of the way. So now f3 can meet f3 with g takes f3. So black plays this move queen g4. Um, now, what do you think? Uh, what do you think is going to happen after knight c3? And if knight c3, we'll still go f3. That's right. Threatening queen g2, we'll mate. still pick up the bishop on b4. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, really uh, quite amazing tactics here. So, queen c4. Um, so just uh, stopping f4 to f3. But now black plays queen g6 and uh, switches its attention to the d6 pawn. So if knight c3, then we'll just be able to play bishop takes d6. So white uh, plays queen d5, defends the pawn on d6, threatening to go knight c3 to, uh, to, uh, to e4 now. Right, are we making it? Well, king h8 doesn't look like much of a move. Knight c3, threatening knight to e4. But now black plays rook g7. And uh, stopping it from another way, because knight e4... If the knight goes on to e4, we'll now checkmate you on g2. Exactly. So, my goodness me, what is happening here? So black, white plays bishop a3, just um, a consolidating move. And I think white's looking for to get one of those structures again where... Um, um, where it gets a knight on e4, but um, black hasn't got this f3 move, you know, with a loose bishop on b4. Just a little waiting move like that. So black plays a waiting move too, rook g8. So rook e1. White's, um, um, well, just playing around, consolidating, seeing what, uh, what, what it can get. Queen h5 is what uh, black plays here. Um, so if uh, knight e4, uh, sorry, white played bishop b2, but if knight e4 now, then black will play f3 and f2, um, which is rather... It's black's pawn that's uh, very close to the end. Yeah, I mean, if rook f1, then queen f3 is actually mate. And uh, knight takes f2, rook takes g3 gives black a lot of counterplay as well. So... Um, white played bishop, um, played um, bishop b2. And black just played queen g6 back, attacking the pawn on d6 again. So the bishop went back to a3. Um, not quite sure what white would have done if black had played queen h5, but um, well, well uh, Leela and, uh, and Stockfish, they just keep on uh, always trying to find different ways to uh, to avoid any any repetitions. So they just played rook g7, and, and um, uh, black's just waiting, saying, saying to white, well, what can you do? So rook d1 was played by, uh, by white. Um, Essentially aiming uh, perhaps to move the queen back to f3 and then play knight e4, protecting the pawn on d6 in any case. But now uh, Stockfish takes um, its uh, tactical opportunity to clarify the position. Plays knight f6. Um, queen e5 allows queen takes g2 mate again. So you play queen f3. And now black plays e4. And you can definitely say that black kind of won that struggle to... Uh, um, to uh, you know, the fight around putting something onto e4, because it's managed to play e5 yeah, to Black's e4. Yeah, pawn got to e4 before White's knight managed to at all. Exactly. So um, um, a little tactic, uh, tactical exchange now. Knight takes e4, queen takes e4, uh, bishop b2, attacking the knight on f6. The queen went back to g6, and now d7. Um, so rook d7, uh, rook takes d7 um, might be rather painful, or probably actually uh, we're going to take nice on f6 thing. first, uh, and then go rook takes d7. Um, but um, uh, black played knight takes d7, takes, takes, queen f4, queen f6, takes and takes. And um, this position is uh, pretty equal. Uh, the rook and pawn uh, balance the, uh, the two pieces. And well, I'm not going to show you the rest of the game. I'll give a link uh, to the PGN uh, in the comment uh, to the uh, video. But this lasted for quite a few moves before they uh, finally made the draw. So there we are. I hope, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that um, that game. Um, oh, just showing you uh, a few uh, a few ways in which it carried on. This was move 64, but the game ended in a draw. Um, I hope you enjoyed that game. I mean, it's, um, I found it, um, uh, first of all, fascinating opening, actually quite, um, um, quite important theoretically. You know, I mean, this, uh, this whole line, this is a novelty and this whole, you know, intricate tactical sequence. But I suppose the, um, the thing that I enjoyed the most was this, um, very subtle positional, um, uh, battle 
all around uh, getting uh, white getting a knight on e4 and black trying to stop it. I mean, these are very, you know, th these are the real, uh, I think, you know, grandmaster exchanges that um, where um, both sides spot the other's plan and um, and uh, one person's doing everything to achieve it and the other person's doing everything to stop it. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, if you can do those sort of things in your own games, then um, you know, that's a real, real, real measure of skill. So there we are. Um, well, just to say, if you've enjoyed this video, then um, don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe. And um, if you haven't taken a look at our book, Game Changer, then do have a look at that too. And um, otherwise, keep well, keep safe and keep on watching our channel because we've got, uh, I think, at least two or three more videos uh, dealing with the uh, this fantastic super final between Leader Zero and Stockfish. Okay, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching.